Hello out there. Welcome to the Step Into Your Magic Virtual Summit. Well, my name is Zachary Shallow or Zachary Shallow Watts, depending on the preference. A little bit about me. I'm a 10 times best-selling author. I'm a podcast host of a show called Black Lines Airspace. I am a human being just like all of you out there. You wonderful people, no matter how big or small you are. <clears throat> well, as of today's date, I am recording this on the 15th of January. <clears throat> so Blair Hayes has the power to give me a date at a future point. Well, in the present time, I am writing my book called the uh, In the Midst of Chaos, or In the Midst of Chaos, excuse me, Manifesting Life Through Co-Creation. That tells my story, basically, more so behind the scenes of what I call the Black Lions rules, the seven that I originally really wanted and an unexpected eighth. Well, surviving that has been quite a journey. And as I sit in my room, I'm really happy and grateful for the time allowed for me to talk. I was thinking about a dear friend uh, named Kim Pierre. Uh, she and I, we were talking earlier today about random things. And I wanted to do this talk in honor of her story called uh, From Victim to Victor. Well, I seriously wasn't feeling that title. No disrespect to Kim. Uh, I know her, I know Blair. Uh, excuse me, pretty well. And some of the other talkers, they would say, why don't you actually have your own title? So I'm taking it in about a different friend. Somebody that I thought I was close to. Some people would say in the spiritual world that this woman was my twin flame. Our relationship was a beautiful thing, but at the same point in time, it was kind of chaotic. <laughs> no pun intended for my solo book in the midst of chaos. Uh, I remember the beautiful hun very well. She had lack. One thing that she would have lack of really is a lack of time. Kids out there, uh, we are gifted 24 hours. We have just one full day to do things. When it comes to the 24 hours for me, depending on preference, any day could start off from somewhere between 1 a.m. in the morning to 3. I don't take it for granted when I get whatever amount of sleep I have. I seriously don't because I work a strenuous job. I am a warehouse worker up to four to five days a week, depending on preference. Sometimes my job even 
could see me not work at all, depending on what goes on. But I don't complain because I got to make a living somehow. I'm sure all of you out there are, are struggling, maybe, depending on what you do. Some of you may have two jobs, may have, oh, dear God, maybe up to four to five different jobs. You are more away from your families. You're more away from your houses. You question how you even function, I'm sure. I really am sure that you question that. Well, back to my friend. Uh, we were talking about her lack of time and what she wants to do in life. I found that she had a passion for something. What you are seeing right now is that passion, and that's public speaking. I really wanted to just go crazy, go bat shit nuts. <laughs> but I really do sit here as I pause at times, just taking it in that I am talking for a virtual summit. I haven't done this in years. The last time I did this, I was scheduled to be part of some summits. The last one from Blur Hayes was supposed to be uh, fall time 2021. And if Blur Hayes is truly watching this, Oh, Blurkins, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong. In uh, most recent times, I would say the end of last year, I was supposed to be part of a different song. Uh, Excuse me. But because of high demand from my job, I couldn't make it. But here I am, and to Blair Hayes, thank you very much for even coming up with the idea to just give us people who you know the opportunity to talk, or even others. I'm not sure who's on here uh, besides myself uh, and Blair for sure. My guess is my dear friend, uh, Kim Pierre, she's going to have a talk at some point. <clears throat> Otherwise than that, the sky's the limit. And that's a beautiful thing to see. Well, this thing of being gifted time, it really burned off not just from friends. It really is something that is restraining, something that can cause people to lose their minds. People have dreams. All of you out there got dreams. How can we make this thing work? How can we truly go after our heart's desires and know that uh, 60 seconds is a minute. 60 minutes is an hour. Seven days is a week. And 24 hours is a day. Not in chronological order, but still the point is made. Well, it takes me back to when I was dying. 
I was dying when I was 32. I think of my ex fiance my dearest friend on the whole entire point. How chasing one dream took me away from her. How our relationship was my state of health, me dying. I wanted to, not just for myself. I wanted to live for her. I really did. But things like unexpected roommates started to come to the forefront. Money was too tight to mention. To quote a legendary singer, uh, Simply Red, amongst other issues. Something inside me wanted to keep on roaring. Because I'm, I'm young, so young. As of this recording, I'm a few weeks away from being 36. At that point in time, in 2019, I outlived some of the most famous people on the planet, like uh, Kurt Cobain, uh, Tupac Shakur, uh, Notorious B.I.G., uh, Janis Joplin, just to name a few. And when I realized that, I stopped my bitching. I stopped my crying about some things that were really little. All it took, ladies and gentlemen, was a pen. Watching a woman who was my world for nearly 10 years. Right in a book like this. I don't know what she was writing. I think she was writing poetry but I wanted to seize what time I had. Archive my thoughts, my dreams, my aspirations, whatever. But from that point forward, when I finally did get a pen, my life started to evolve in ways I never saw. And I cherished every single moment that occurred. It will lead me to being a best-selling author. Something I roar proudly about. Something that no one can take away from me. No matter how famous or not famous. They cannot take that away from me. That is an award. That is an honor. That is a title of signifying that you are the best in the writing industry. Now, will anybody really read the now 10 Black Lines Roars. Some people have, and we've talked about it. The most recent is called Letter to My Own Born Children. That is in the final Letters of Love book by my friend, uh, Melissa. 
I'll give you a brief synopsis. Kids out there, uh, I'm a father to miscarried children. I had one dream, and that was to be a father. That's all I want. I fell in love with a 16-year-old girl when I was 19. And off to the races we went, fighting for each other, for our dreams. But then because we lost life, I started to lose sight of who I was, who I am. And it put me on a darker path. <laughs> One that some say is haunting me today. More ways than one. <sighs> but it isn't. Because as I said before, I learned what it is to truly be dying myself to hold life precious. Now you're asking, what can we do? What can we do? Well, you can take short steps every single day, kids. Seriously. For me, like I said, took these tools to get the ball rolling. Well, we're not writers. You are. You just don't know. What if I told you all it takes is up to five minutes? And then you can gradually grow to like 10 minutes. And then you go maybe almost five minutes more until you are amazed. You're in awe of yourself. That attracted people at my former nursing home job. People noticed me writing. They were in awe that I would be writing during my lunch break or at random points through the day if I didn't have uh, anything to do. That inspired the Black Lions Roar. People wanted to know my story. Oh, how did you lose so much weight? All I did was just write guidelines. All I did was just write a book. And then book. Then I started writing it at the demand of other people. And I did it in 10 minutes bursts. Unbeknownst to me, I really thought that it was a book by this gentleman named uh, Nicholas Boothman that really started to get the ball rolling when I fell off the planet with Black Lions Roar, but not the case. <sighs> I was doing it all alone. Then Blair Hayes showed up. <laughs> Hi, Blair kids. Uh, we just clicked. And I learned how to reduce what I had to five pages. Then the do's and don'ts of being a best selling author. <sighs> Another thing you can do, kids, besides writing, research. You got phones, you got computers, you got internet. You can research what you want to do. How other people have gone about. Like with me, uh, I was a type two diabetic and I was looking into things that could help me reverse my condition. 
And it brought me to one Dr. Jason Fung, who, in, who suggested intermittent fasting, among other things. Here I am three plus years later, babes. I believe I'm under 160 pounds currently. Ah, and that's a wonderful accomplishment. I would say, talk to others. Talk to others. Try to get people on your side. Or what uh, the self-help world, depending on whose preference, uh, would call a mastermind or partners in believing. All it takes is one person. One person can make a difference. You're making a difference right now by even just listening to these words. And if I inspired you somehow, some way to get off your high knees to go do what you want, this was well worth it. This was well worth it. What else can you do? <laughs> what else can you do to make the time to roar for your dreams? Meditate on it. Like close your eyes for a few seconds. Visualize you actually having what you want. The legendary uh, Abraham Hicks uh, was quoted as saying, all it takes to manifest something is 17 seconds. I tried to teach this to other people, meaning Zachary Shuttle. I'm not Abraham Hicks, I mean to. I try to teach people to meditate because we live in such a stressful world, very stressful. We're bombarded with negativity, like a Donald Trump seeking to uh, become American president, uh, the coronavirus having uh, all these sub variants and whatnot, and people having to go get vaccinated, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, dear God. <laughs> but all that doesn't matter because of your dreams. If you want them, go get them. Truly make the time and imagine, imagine what it feels like to have what you want. Like for me, something that I always imagined was being a best-selling author once I got it. Like, actually writing for different people. Now it's not just blur heads. Once I got it, I really did put in that effort, that time. I went to my friend, Janet Brent. I went to somebody's recommendation uh, named Melissa DeVoe. There's others. Too. But the point of the matter was, I spoke to them. They liked my stories. Thought, okay, let's take a crazy uh, chance on this hat right here. This guy, he seems legit. He seems nice enough. Why not? <laughs> Why not? So all I did was just. Not just that, I believed 
in that. I believed in the time I had. If I could do multiple things in a day, I could do almost anything. What if we don't have faith? What if we try to go for our dreams, but we fail? You didn't really fail, you crazy people out there. You did not fail at all. You are still taking steps. You took the steps. You just got to try again. Dust yourself off and try again until it comes. Many people on the planet, and I could testify this, because this ain't my only rodeo in this life. I've been blessed to be reincarnated multiple times. And I could see people on their deathbed wishing that they did things when they were younger. Sorry, something's kind of called me. <laughs> well, this is who I am, kids. Uh, reincarnated soul. Yeah. All right. Well, I've seen people die not wanting their dreams. And it's a shame when they are dying and then they say, Oh, I wish I did. You don't want to be in your deathbed wishing you did it while you still had time. You really don't. I would say another thing to help you go after your dreams, not just imagining, not just writing, not just researching. I would say <sighs> really. Listen to your heart. Really ask it, what do I want? Is this truly what I want? Or is it because of someone else? Some things in my life occurred because other people want it. I didn't want some things in my life. I seriously didn't. I never dreamed heavy of trying to drive a car. For some odd reason, I was okay just taking a bus or train or ferry. But my father kept on uh, being a prick. <clears throat> <laughs> about me driving. I remember an incident between me and it. And funny, when I wanted to go for it, legit, or I thought I did, uh, he kidnapped me <laughs> to go looking for a job because I was unemployed. And that was something that I resented him for. That's another reason why to make the time to roar for your dreams. You don't want to resent other people. It can follow 
mere days to years. <sighs> I believe that wholly. It's a scary thing to be on a public stage, but it's very satisfying when you do it. I say make time to roar for your dreams because it really does give you confidence. It gives you confidence to do things more. Like if I could be on virtual summits, I'd be Copa. I don't have to get on a legit stage, legit stage, like some of these big time hats. Uh, no, I don't. Just being like this, makes me happy. It really does. Once you really start doing some things, you really see your universe expand. I say that's another reason to make time for your dreams. You don't know what the universe has in mind. For you. Just even saying yes, just saying yes to your dream, that really can catapult. That can make you feel mighty when you feel small. I should know better than anybody else about feeling low. This last year has been a blessing, but at the same time has been a curse. I'm not making money off of my coaching bit. I'm being honest. Uh, my job as much as I respect it, it's not, completely where my heart is. My heart is helping people, but I'm feeling a higher sense of calm. Like what this thing I call mind over matter. The rap goes something like this. It is where health resurrection manifests. It starts in the mind. What follows why? What I do is not just weight loss. We really work in your head. Sometimes I, I'm gonna be honest con continually and repetitiously. I can be a bit of a prick. I can yell at people, I can scar people, but that's what good intention, because I really want people to go after their dreams. As I said, I don't want people to die feeling as if they didn't really do anything for themselves. I really don't, uh. excuse me. I want there to be a appreciation for the life that people have. That's why I'm here right now doing this recording. I felt a Jones in my heart to just do the recording today on January 15th. 
I could have waited until tomorrow. I could have waited until maybe two days later or even a month from now or even two months. But when something is I say seize the day, kids. Take a chance. Make mistakes. Get Miss <laughs> the quote of Mrs. Fr Miss Frizzle from uh, the Magic School Bus. And God bless anybody that knows what I'm talking about. It's by experimenting. Experimenting can lead to your dream. Two. All it did for me was get me to a stage I never thought was possible. That I wanted somebody who I held dear to to share with. But fear, fear kept somebody who had such a passion for life, small. Fear gave a woman I love reasons to not even bother with this blessed opportunity. This is an opportunity. Not many people can say that they got opportunities. It makes me humble. It makes me grateful every single day to know that I had an opportunity to talk today. Whenever you're watching this, it does. To know that however many people are watching me will be touched. To know that by the end of March into early April, that somebody will fill the Jones to be a public speaker. Somebody will fill the Jones to be a writer. Somebody will fill the Jones to just make whatever dreams they want legit. No bullshit, no excuses, no chains, no whips, no anything to hold them down. And that's what this is all about. You stepping into your magic. You finding your light. And I would like to end this talk with something that I usually would say for the end of my podcast, the Black Lions Airspace. Thank you, all of you out there, the kids out there. There's one goal, one aim, one road, one focus. And that's love. Even if it sounds like I was venting, I'm passionate. I'm passionate about my writings. I'm passionate about life itself. We've got such time and we got to seize it because only God knows how much time we got to live. And I'm praying for all of you that you'll get your dreams. Truly. You deserve it. You deserve it. Don't let anybody on God's green earth tell you otherwise. 
May it be your own family members, may it be so-called friends, may it be employers, no, uh, whatever. I'm asking, please, don't give up on your dream. Don't give up. Because when you do, you'll be on a path that you may be questioning for the rest of your life. Come from a place of not fear. And if you do have to come from a place of fear, look it in the eye. Know that you are brave for just saying yes to your dreams. And if you're a female, I'm holding you by your hands. And if you're a guy, I'm patting you on your back. And I'm reachable. <laughs> so how can we actually uh, talk to you if we need your help? Well, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Zachary Shiloh and Blackline130, respectively. Uh, Black is spelled B-L-K, all caps. Uh, you can email me at uh, Z-A-C-S-H-I-130 at gmail.com. If you need an alternate way to email. It is Z A C H A R Y S dot W A T T S at yahoo.com. I am still doing my podcast, The Black Lines Airspace. I'm always looking for guests to join me. Who knows? Maybe. You out there could be an interviewee for what I call Black Lions Domain. The interview segment where Zachary Shiloh <clears throat> used to roam around the earth. Since 2021, he's been partaking in what he calls universal dream. Please, ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid to have me as a mastermind partner. Yeah, sure, maybe I'll yell at you. Maybe <laughs> I'll cuss you a bit, but I do it because I care. I may not know you personally, but I do love you. I do have a soft spot in my heart. I'm not completely dark. I'm a dark worker. Yes. But there is light in the darkness. And you watching this is supporting not just your dreams, but everybody who's talked today or throughout the summit. I don't know, again, when I'm really being watched. But your and your viewership means a lot to us all. With that said, I bow to you all in respect. Please take care of yourselves, your friends, your families, if you have a bond with them. Know that you're not alone. Seize the day, you wonderful hunts, kins, and loves. Make the time. You know, regardless of being a writer, being a whatever you want to be, make the time. Make the time. Make the time. Thanks for watching. Bye.